Hey, Snackers, what types of projects would you be able to run if your database was managed on the cloud for you? In episode 37 of DevNet Snack Minute, Matt and Kareem chat with developer advocate Jock Reed, who demonstrates how simple it is to set up a database on the cloud. Hey, Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm one of the managers of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Welcome to episode 37 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minutes is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that we do here. And uh, this week, we're going to be running more of our developer tool series. And we brought on Jock uh, to talk to us about MongoDB Atlas. Hey, right, Jock, do you mind introducing yourself? Hi, I'm Jock Reed. I'm developer advocate over IoT and edge compute and a little bit of cloud technologies. A jack of all trades. Uh, so, uh, you know, we I had mentioned that you were going to be talking about MongoDB Atlas. Can you can you jump into that and uh, give us a little rundown of, of what that tool is and how it's helpful helpful for developers? Yeah. So basically, MongoDB Atlas is uh, Mo the company Mongo running uh, the database as a service. Um, this is very helpful to developers because it's basically one less thing for them to have to think about. Um, especially okay. when I'm starting new projects, I'm you know, getting started with uh, um, something really quickly. I can spin up a free database right on Mongo Atlas uh, pretty quickly, and I can do it in any cloud infrastructure I want. So it's multi-cloud, um, meaning any app that I develop is already multi-cloud by default. And so that's kind of a nice little uh, thing to have with, uh, with MongoDB Atlas as well. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing how, how quick it is to spin up a database. Um, can you show us? Yeah, yeah, sure. So basically, you have to you have to start a project. I just kind of did this for brevity to make this uh, straightforward. But you create a project, um, which I just called it Snack Minute 101, and then I spun up a database and I selected the free tier because obviously I'm I'm just starting. I don't need to buy dedicated or serverless or anything like that. Um, and then right here, I can choose my um, cloud provider, AWS, Azure, whatever. We'll just go with AWS. Um, I'll go with you know, this region right here. And then I will hit create cluster. And so there you go. Um, it's creating a cluster for the database, um, which they will manage completely um, for us right here. I mean, it's just that easy. So I presume then you're going to want to tie into that database with using MongoDB. Traditionally, you spin it up on your local environment and you can tie into those um, services directly on your local host. Um, can you give us a flavor of how easy or, or potentially even hard um, it is to tie into this now database as a service, the online service that they're providing? Right. So it's really easy to tie into as far as any kind of a developer coding stack you may have. So if you're writing in Python or Node.js, um, you can usually use the SDKs that you already were using for Mongo. Um, you oh, basically cool. will, yeah. So you put in the um, the connection string. Um, you connect to the database and that's it. Um, and again, it's the it's it basically gives you one less thing to worry about. I mean, even if you're spinning things up in Kubernetes or Docker Compose or whatever, just to kind of test something out, you don't have to go, oh no, I have to, you know, download this version of you know Mongo as an image and then deploy it. And um, then I have to potentially worry about scaling it at some point. They do all that for you. So you have a local deployment, an on-prem deployment. Does this manage your your external deployments to uh, the database, or is it only whatever you deploy in the cloud? Uh, currently, it is whatever you deploy in the cloud. Um, I think there, I've actually talked to someone from Mongo um, about managing on site databases. I think that's something they might look into at some point. Um, I don't know if it's on their roadmap, but for right now, it's just the cloud database. So if you were doing something that were on the edge, and you did not have access to the public internet, This uh, you probably would be a little bit limited on that. So that's probably one of the gotchas for there. You know, the nice thing that I'm looking at here, and I don't know why this is whatever project I do, the last thing I think about is storage. <laughs> um, I tend to be, uh, I don't know if I call it lazy or, or whatever, um, but, you know, when we think about microservices architectures and dealing with, you know, the idea of being stateless, 
um, it can be hard to abstract the actual database from it because databases by definition are state, right? And, um, mm -hmm. and so, Jock, can you talk to us a little bit about how you think about dealing with microservices and how something like Microsoft or like MongoDB Atlas? Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's actually one of my, um, you know, big, big things about microservice and cloud deployments is state is the big enemy of scale, right? So anytime, if I want to spin up a web server, I can just say, if it's, there is no state involved, I can spend hundreds, thousands, as much as traffic will allow me to do. The problem comes in with when you're running database, if you have a lot of database entry, that kind of thing, um, you're going to, you have to scale your storage, which is another headache. You have to be able to, even if you're doing it on the cloud, then you got to pay for it. You got to increase quotas. There's a lot of, things you got to do to make it work. Um, and then you're on the hook for it a little bit more. I mean, you're still on the hook mm -hmm. for it if you have customers or whatever, but um, it's nice to be able to, you know, reach out and wring someone else's neck for um, any data <laughs> loss you may or may not have, right. at, at least in my opinion. So um, again, like I, I think one of the things about uh, them having multi-cloud is I do a lot of Kubernetes deployments. So if I want to go to, you um, AKS or EKS or GKE for Google or whatever, and run um, some managed Kubernetes cluster somewhere, I can just um, bring this database here and I can do it from anywhere. Um, and they, and as you saw, when we were doing the deployment, um, I was able to choose which cloud um, provider I, I, would, I would be able to use. I don't know about you guys, but but as we as this was happening, right? Like as, as he was deploying a database and picking the, you know, the, the cloud provider, I was, my mind was like, you know what would be cool? It'd be cool to look underneath the hood of this tool to see what the orchestration is like behind that. Like, I'm sure they're doing <laughs> some type of infrastructure as code there, right? Like there, there's like some Terraform automating all of that. Like just being able to see what the heck is happening underneath is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, um, I, I wonder if we can reach out to Mongo and see. <laughs> I do actually know. Um, that we will have some representatives from MongoDB at DevNet Create. So that was a nice little help to, to plug that. So uh, we can ask them those questions at DevNet Create. <laughs> awesome. Jock, so I, I see our database is spun up. I'm curious, do you have a, a demo to tie into the database you just created? Yeah, so here is, uh, I have a, this is running on one of my Kubernetes clusters, but this basically is uh, spinning up Appy, my, my little, um, you know, faux application here that um, has, um, what do you call it, a swagger doc here. So um, open API spec and allows me to be able to use it and hit it from here. And so, um, and that any data that I apply to that is hit this database here. I spun this up just before the call. There's also a project I'm working on. It's not complete yet, but I'm converting my Meraki block list which basically takes the client traffic from Meraki, it compares it to the, the snort block list and sees if anything is, you know, gone awry. And so um, I'm actually storing some data right there. This is actually a work in progress for me. So um, this is an example of a project I'm using right now. Maybe we'll have you back on to, to show how that project played out. <laughs> all right, cool, yeah. But yeah, it's it's got all this spun up. It's ready for me to start um, using the API and um, adding data to it right now. It's, a, it's already created additional collections from my Appy um, app here. And so it's running on my Kubernetes cluster. Um, which that'll have to be another tool. I'm actually using a Rancher desktop, um, which is an alpha project I'm using right now for spinning up my Kubernetes <laughs> cluster on my on my laptop here. But we can talk about that at a different time. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's populating this database right now. Um, and then this right here is just currently it's just a Python script. So um, it'll it'll become a full service and everything once I've uh, um, finished building the rest of it out. Very cool. So. Um, soup to nuts. Uh, we can we can get a database up and running for the the baseline proof of concepts and then then the full applications as well. Um, Snackers and Jock, unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, Jock, before we let you go though, we ask every guest this very special question: um, If you could pick a superpower, what would it be and why? Ah, uh, so you know, I I always appreciate the. Uh, the mind and how powerful it is. And that's the, that's why it goes to my choice of Iron Man. Um, Cause he's legitimately the only superhero in the MCU that does not have real powers, <laughs> except for the power of his own mind. And so 
he can create and do all that kind of stuff and and build his superpower. And so um, I have a great appreciation for that. So I guess it would be Iron Man. So it's being a super genius. Okay, cool. Well, uh, Snackers, check out MongoDB uh, Atlas. And Jock, thank you for, or for introducing us to this cool developer tool. And we'll see you guys next time on DevNet Snack Minute. Thanks, Snackers.